it's a very demanding thing to do, to create a world in CG that is this authentic. It is so believable. We're able to bring the ancient world to life like no one's ever seen before. It's been a real exercise in trying to have the hand of the artist be invisible so that the story and the science gets to take center stage. It's such a thrill, and that's a remarkable achievement. After making the first series of Prehistoric Pack, we felt there was so much still untold. So the second series takes some of those stories further. You have the most sophisticated reconstructions of dinosaurs that you ever had, and yet at the same time you film it in the way as though they were living animals. Ultimately, the object of the exercise is to make a natural history show. It just happens to have dinosaurs in it. When you first see one of these things in the bones, as it were, and certainly in the reconstructions, it takes your breath away. But you really then want to start asking questions, very simple questions. How did they make? How did they catch their food? How fast could they run? Were they aggressive? If you study the physiology of animals and are a zoologist, you are accustomed to those questions. Finding the answers from a bit of bone is a different thing. But the fact is, we do know the answers to these questions. Dinosaurs have been studied for over a century, and we're in a golden era of dinosaur interpretation. That was why I thought it was the right time to do this series, because the vibe I was getting from the scientific community was that it was no longer about the bones, it was about behavior, and it was about interpreting the bones in terms of the lives these animals lead. These sort of basic realities are what paleontologists use in order to work out how an animal that was alive 66 million years ago actually ate its food. It's very important that after your mind has been blown by those wonders, that someone says yes and we can prove that they're true. There's no point in doing this unless it is a piece of fundamentally accurate science. The process of making this project, just the simply of making the animals look as accurate as they can, has demanded such deep scientific research. That's why the answers are as convincing as they are, because the questions came from knowledgeable minds. New finds are being made every day, so we wanted to reflect some of these new discoveries. For season two, we've created a whole cast of new characters, about 15 of which are brand new dinosaurs that people won't have seen before. Lurking in these muddy pools is a monster. There's one sequence with a massive frog. <laughs> Beelzebufo, the giant toad. It's a nice, fun sequence, that, isn't it? It's a surprise. Mind you, if you don't like toads, I mean, you know, it's a huge, great toad. Quite a lot of people, I find, mysteriously, don't like toads. I love toads. I'm terrifically keen on toads. I always love the stories of the families, too how the families interact with one another and, and move through nature and, and the learning curve for the little ones. I'm aware that I'm looking at extinct animals that I've never seen in life. But on the other hand, they are very familiar in the way they behave. It's all about authenticity, not just the authenticity of the reconstructions. The animals are as realistic as possible, but also the authenticity of how it is presented as a television program. What surprised me was the skill with which they decided to accept the limitations that they would be if the subjects of their films were actually alive and there. Can you get yourself immersed in the lives of these recreated animals enough to actually care what happens to them? They have to deal with all sorts of problems. That's part of life. It doesn't matter if it's today or 66 million years ago, animals still had to face similar challenges of bringing up babies and avoiding being eaten and challenges of the environment. 
So, you know, you can start to join the dots a bit. And through that, we can draw conclusions to exactly how the dinosaurs looked, where they fit in their ecological niche and how they behave. The visual effects are certainly my inroad into this project. I didn't have a background in paleontology, though I had a fascination with dinosaurs. And when I met with the team, we were talking about, hey, could we actually present this in a way where the effects become invisible? What John has brought to it is a confidence to us that technically we could deliver the accuracy that all the other work demands. Of course, you can make them do anything, but the animators have clearly watched animals living today in that sort of circumstance and how they go about dealing with the problems. That's the most extraordinary part of what these animators have done, that they make you feel that those animals are thinking, living creatures. These artists have a deep understanding of how to breathe life into characters through animation and how to bring photorealism through shading and through lighting. The scale of this project and the, the resources you need and the ambition and the risk to make a series about something that doesn't exist anymore was a very ambitious project to do. But all of it is in preparation for letting people of all ages watch it together and maybe seeing something they've never seen before presented in this way. The present is only a very small part of the natural world, and, and to know the history of our predecessors is an important thing. That's what science is about. It's about discovery, about knowledge. Knowledge is exciting. Season two of Prehistoric Planet ups the ante in every way, and it creates just an impression of a long lost world that unfortunately we can't go back and see, but using our imagination and our scientific know-how, we can collaborate with an amazing group of people to create the best dinosaurs people have ever seen. I'm glad that we gave it time to develop, because there is no doubt that we know very significantly more about dinosaurs than we did even 10 years ago. It was only Apple TV Plus that did back us. And to have Sir David and John and the Natural History Unit working together, it's a dream team. And dinosaurs will always come and produce something unexpected. Get ready for Prehistoric Planet 2. Only on Apple TV Plus.